Okay, we're going to learn about the concept of area and how to find areas uh, without using formulas, at least not at the beginning. Um, I'm going to do another month where we do uh, formulas for areas. In fact, I'll show you a formula that will find the area of any polygon you want to make. So that's, um, you can wait for that one. It's important, though, to start by understanding the meaning of area. And when I usually ask students, the first thing they say is that some kind of formula, like length times width or something like that. That's not the meaning of area. What we mean by the area of a region is a comparison between the size of this region in a two-dimensional sense, like this way and this way, with the size of a standard region that we assign a single unit of area. So that we're going to call this a unit square. And unit literally means one. So if you're using measurements that are in centimeters, this would be a centimeter by one centimeter. So that would be one square centimeter. If you're using miles, like this is a region on a map, then that could be perhaps one mile by one mile this would be one square mile, but it's still one unit of area, okay? So what we want to do, let's start with this area that we've, we have right here. And what we want to take is, let's take the, these little squares here, and let's assume that one of these is one unit of area. And I want to know how many of these cover this region. Now, I can hear you already objecting that it doesn't fit because the edges are cut off. Well, the same thing happens when you measure length, doesn't it? If I give you a length and say, what's the length of this thing? You would compare it to a ruler, and the ruler has marks every, say, inch or every centimeter, and it doesn't always come out even. Okay, and so you have to say, well, that's somewhere in between this length and this length. And so you have to estimate uh, the boundaries like this. Well, this is a two-dimensional case of the same type of thing. So what we're going to start by doing is counting all the squares that are entirely contained in this area. And then you have to come up with some method of estimating uh, the areas that are left over. You could look at the fractional areas, like say this one right here, it's about half is inside. That's one way to do it. Or you could say... This one is uh, more than half inside, and this one is more than half outside. So I'm going to only count uh, squares that are at least halfway in, and I'm not going to count squares that are at least halfway out, and just figure that on the average as I go around, that'll sort of balance out. And that's one way of getting that estimate. Okay, So let's uh, do that now. Let's start counting. And that comes to our next issue. Here's one, two, three. Here's one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And I'm going to stop right there a minute because you can see this is going to get very tedious. So we might want to use some shortcuts. Like, for instance, up this far, I have 20 squares. And if I take a region like this, I can count a bunch of them all at once. Because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows of 20 squares. So if I have 5 rows and 20 squares in each row, that's 100 squares right there. Okay. And notice what we've done. If I count this number of rows and this number of squares per row, the product of length times width is what, we, what I'm doing. And that gives us the number of squares, doesn't it? So we're simply counting squares by a shortcut. We're multiplying length times width to say how many squares in the region. Now, that's something we're going to come back to. Length times width. The reason length times width for a rectangle works is because the length tells you how many squares would fit along one edge, and the width tells you how many rows of those squares you would need to cover the whole rectangle. 
Okay, so that's our first area formula that we're going to figure out. We'll use that next next time. But let's just keep going. So here we have 100. I could get a few more here, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And so let's make a list over here. I have 100. And I have 7. And what about here? I'm going to count this one because it's more than halfway in. I'm going to use that method for estimating. And I'm going to take any square that's more than halfway in and go ahead and count it. And any that's more than halfway out, I'm not going to count it at all. So that hopefully that'll balance out in the end. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. So here's 12. Okay. And here is pretty much a row. And all of these are more than halfway in. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And we end up here. Um, let's just start with that one. And end with that one. I could count that one, but I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave that one out. So it's one, two, three, four. Okay, and then up here, looks like another three. Okay, let's add these up so far. Well, seven and three make ten. Eight and two make ten. That's twenty and four. So twenty-four. Two and one is three. 134 so far. Okay, let's uh, change pin color so I don't get them mixed up. I'm going to go to green next. Okay, so here's a block of, uh, well, I can do six of them there. And let's take, let's see, let's take these two. And these are less than half, so I'm not going to take those. And let's take these down to here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's six and two and five. And let's say there's two here. Now what about here? Let's go down to here. Let's come over to, I can come over to here. Because that one's more than halfway in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, by 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, it's 49. Okay. And let's do this one. Let's come this far. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, by 3, that's 30. And let's see here. Um... Well, here's one, here's three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say that's six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just add a ten. Let's see what we have now. Six, uh, seven, eight, and five is thirteen. That makes fifteen and twenty-four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hundred and four. Let's change colors again. Okay, let's count all the remaining ones here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, let's take that as fourteen. So it's fourteen. And let's go, let it go with that. So I've left some out, but I've included some overlap, and so I'm assuming we're about balanced on that. So I have 134, 104, and 14. 252 square units. Okay. Now, did we use a formula? Well, we use shortcut for counting blocks to shortcut our counting, but that's pretty much all we did. Okay. Now, this is a method that um, uh, we can apply to just measuring just about anything. And so the project that I'm going to have for this month, I'm pretty much just going to have one main project, is we're going to actually take Google Earth and find a lake 
and find the area of the lake. In fact, I'm going to find a lake that's well known and so its area would be found on the internet in how many acres it is and so forth. So we're going to find uh, how many square feet or how many square miles and we'll convert it to acres and compare it to what we got, uh, to what the standard accepted area is. Um, and, I'm, and we're going to do this a couple of different ways, so we'll get into that as we go.